Uh, so hello, welcome everyone. Uh, it's nice to be again here with you. Uh, I've been with you in the first session and I'm happy to be here with you in the, the final webinar. And uh, as you know, we are currently in webinar four where we will discuss um, certain unique issues to Africa and, and, and some and maybe discuss some ways of how we could mitigate these issues uh, with regard to preprints. Um, so again, uh, as I said, this is the fourth webinar and I'm Lamis uh, Al Khair. Um, I'm an ASAP BI fellow uh, in this year's cohort. I'm also a lecturer at the University of Khartoum and the co-director and the training lead of uh, the African Reproducibility Network. Uh, so in this session, we will mainly be discussing some of the key advantages of preprints to African scholars. Uh, I know we've discussed that uh, uh, previously, but we will revisit that and also uh, the current preprint landscape in Africa and some key concerns that African scholars have uh, when it comes to preprint. And we'll also discuss some of the efforts that are currently happening to enhance preprint adoption uh, in Africa. So um, as you remember, we said that one of the great advantages of preprints is the faster dissemination of scientific finding. And I think we think that this is particularly important uh, for African scholars because uh, there is some kind of bias when it comes to um, especially when it comes to peer review, uh, when a research is done by Africans or comes from an African institution. And this usually uh, results in, 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 in more delays than the already known delays uh, when it comes to uh, the normal publication system. So this is why we think that preprints are one of the biggest advantages to African scholars is that they could very easily and, and 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 in a much faster fashion will be able to uh, disseminate their work and and sort of uh, publish their work work to the uh, to the public. Uh, so one of the biggest advantages of preprints is that it will help African scholars overcome uh, publication delays. The second thing that we've talked about previously is that preprints are free. They are free to publish and they are free to read. And this is particularly important for African scholars because we all struggle from high uh, APCs or article processing charges or uh, subscription fees. Uh, we Usually our institutions don't have subscriptions uh, to uh, publishers or journals. So this means that we cannot access the uh, the publications for us to use in our research. And we also are, um, you know, uh, always uh, faced with uh, really high article processing charges uh, that prevent us from, from actually publishing open access. And if you remember also, we said that one of the things that... Uh, actually has increased as a result of the high article processing charges is the predatory journals. Uh, if you remember in our very first session, we talked that uh, we could see that over the years, the article processing charges are increasing dramatically. And at the same time, we, we saw some studies that showed that um, the predatory journals and the activity and publishing in predatory journals is also sort of uh, parallelly increasing over the years. So this could mean that there is a correlation uh, between the high APCs and predatory journals. So preprint is basically a solution for all of that. You know, it's it's better for an African scholar to publish the research as a preprint than to publish it in a predatory journal and basically losing. Uh, this research and losing uh, all of their effort because no one will uh, no one will acknowledge uh, uh, pre uh, research published in predatory journals. But uh, the world is now growingly accepting uh, uh, preprints, you know, uh, work that is published as preprints. So this is a very uh, uh, other important uh, advantage that preprints offer to us as African researchers. The third thing uh, is the increased visibility 
and reach. Uh, we've discussed also in our very first webinar that one of the key advantages of preprints is that they significantly enhance the visibility and reach of the work. And this is proven by many, many uh, metrics like the downloads, uh, the views of the preprint, you know, it's it's definitely that pre it's it's a fact that preprints are viewed and downloaded more than um, uh, normal uh, uh, published journals uh, or journals published in the traditional way. And this is, I think, something that we as African researchers desperately need. There, there has been over the years there has been um, a great lack in the visibility of research that comes from Africa, maybe even related to the uh, the other two points, uh, due to the publication delays and due to the high article processing charge and due to that research being published in predatory journals. All of these uh, issues have sort of uh, uh, contributed to the fact that uh, research by African scholars is uh, less visible and less citable. So, one of the key advantages of preprints is that it enhances the visibility and reach, and hence it will enhance the citation and the attention of the global community uh, to African research. So uh, in addition to all of the other benefits of preprints that we've discussed, uh, I think that these are sort of the three key benefits that uh, uh, really speak to us as African scholars. And the most important thing is that given these advantages of preprints, what eventually will happen in the ecosystem is that it will become, in the research ecosystem, is that it will become more equitable and more inclusive. And this is something that open science is actually one of the pillars that open science have, um, you know, the movement of open science have begun to address is the lack of equity and inclusion. And by uh, adopting preprints uh, and, and adopting all the benefits that it brings, uh, it, it will eventually lead to more equity and inclusion in the scientific ec ecosystem, especially when it comes to African uh, researchers. Um, yet, despite that we've seen all of the great advantages that preprints could bring to African scholars, Yet, if we look at this map, and this is this is taken from um, uh, uh, an eLife uh, article, um, and we can see that almost everywhere other uh, every other continent in the whole wide world has sort of more uh, preprint adoption compared to Africa. You know, the the darker the color, you know, the for example, the red means more adoption, and the white means that there are basically no preprints uh, available for that country. And you can see that it, it's clearly uh, visible that in Africa, there is a, a great lack of adoption um, to preprints. And of course, some countries are more uh, like adopting preprints more than other countries. But overall, like if you see the average, there is far less adoption uh, of preprints compared to the uh, global community. And again, this, this, this shouldn't be the case because preprint actually, uh, as we've just discussed, provide uh, uh, African scholars with so many advantages and help them overcome many barriers that they are used to uh, facing with the traditional publishing system. And, 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 and this, like not just this uh, eLife uh, article, that highlighted the, the, the lack of awareness or lack of adoption of preprints in Africa. But um, we can see from other studies that there is uh, still a lack in uh, uh, adoption of preprints, even though that it's growing, but it remains significantly lower compared to the global uh, counterparts. So for example, uh, this was a, a study done by a, a group of ASAP bios of the last cohort. And it basically uh, studied the status and challenges of preprint adoption in Africa. And out of uh, 182 respondents, uh, this was a survey that distributed to was distributed to African scholars. 
out of 182 respondents, only 41.9% said that they have posted a preprint before. So less than half of the interviewed uh, individuals have uh, posted a preprint before. So this again builds, adds to the evidence that there is a lack of preprint adoption in Africa. One other um, uh, piece of uh, evidence that we have is actually this webinar series. When we uh, opened the registration for this webinar series, of course, uh, a lot of uh, people registered, uh, exactly 146 uh, uh, people uh, registered to these workshops, and 37% uh, of them had no prior knowledge about preprints, and 39% had never read the preprint, and 67.8% had never authored a preprint, okay? So, so again, this this um, actually magnifies the importance of doing um, workshops like this to 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 uh, to address this problem, to address this low adoption of preprints in Africa. One other thing that uh, ASA Bio uh, is currently doing is that it's organizing a series of workshops that is trying to gather views and input from African-based researchers uh, on preprint use and adoption. And uh, this series of workshops, when we opened the registration, we had 100 respondents and 24% of these respondents said that they actually, they're actually don't know what a preprint is. They're not familiar with preprints. And 64% said that they have never engaged or contributed to a preprint. So again, all of these are just evidence of the magnitude of the issue, of the magnitude of how preprints, despite them being uh, so advantageous for us as African researchers, but somehow uh, they are not being uptaken and adopted by, uh, by African scholars. And um, uh, that same research that was done by the uh, ASA, the uh, past cohort of ASA Bios has actually found that those who posted preprints, uh, those uh, individuals who actually posted preprints, who are uh, who were less than fifty percent, they actually posted these preprints in preprint servers that are owned and operated by major publishers. So. These are like the Square uh, Research Square, SSRN, and BioArchive. And these are all preprint servers that are either owned by publishers or are collaborating um, uh, or operated by, uh, by major publishers. And this, uh, 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 on this uh, actually, uh, PLOS has actually released a report saying that um, and PLOS is contributing with BioArchive, you know. Uh, so when a, a publisher, when a, um, a, an African or scholar uh, posts their preprint to PLOS, they are asked to, um, uh, if they want to post their, pre uh, their uh, work as a preprint. And uh, what PLOS found is that actually it is uh, the top uh, authors that opt for posting a preprint are actually from African countries. And actually that uh, eight of the 10 highest opt-in rates are from African countries. As you can see in the table, like on the top is Uganda, Tanzania, Cameroon, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Kenya, uh, and Ghana, and South Africa uh, later on. So uh, this actually, uh, you know, uh, this goes uh, opposite to what we know about African preprints. But then, if you look at it, this could basically be because PLOS is one of the few publishers that actually offer um, waiver, uh, the offer uh, APCs waiver to African researchers. That's why many, many African researchers actually publish in PLOS, while researchers from other countries who have more a means to pay APCs, they will uh, try to publish in other publishers. So uh, when I started thinking about it, this is the only reason that I that I could come off, uh, come with, you know, it's because Africans uh, really love PLOS and publish a lot in PLOS. And this makes sense that, uh, you know, a PLOS will see uh, uh, higher opt-in rates from Africans because basically African post more uh, in, in, in this journal in PLOS. 
But what this uh, entails is that, you know, still traditional publishing is the dominant because, you know, uh, posting preprints is by African researchers is just like a, as a co-option, you know, it's, it's when they are publishing in the traditional uh, publishing system, when they are prompted to uh, uh, publish their work as a preprint while it undergoes peer review, they, you know, they tick that box. Uh, they choose, you know, for their uh, articles to be published as preprints. And this, unfortunately, like really um, negates many of the benefits that comes uh, from posting preprints before actually submitting to a journal. Uh, because when you post a preprint, you know, it it uh, it, it becomes visible to a, a larger community and this community will be able to, you know, uh, maybe point out some things that you could modify uh, that will help you make your uh, your study stronger. But for example, like uh, they could uh, suggest a, a, a statistical test, for example, that would make your uh, results more robust. So when you are actually posting a preprint as you are posting it to uh, a journal, then you don't get that benefit. You know, you will not get that benefit of, of have being able to get community feedback uh, on your work before actually making it a permanent record as, uh, as a published uh, article. So again, this, this, this really highlights that in Africa, the traditional publishing system is the one that is still dominant. And there's a lot of work to be done to enhance the adoption of, uh, of preprints. Uh, so if we talk about some of the probable reasons that preprint adoption in, Af in Africa is low, we could come up with a few of them. And perhaps the most important one is the lack of awareness about what preprints are and their potential benefits. I think that this this is the major issue currently that you know not many African African scholars know about preprints and not many of them they might have heard about preprints but they don't really know their benefits or uh, their advantages. One other thing is that uh, African scholars are concerned about scooping, and you know uh, they're worried that. Uh, uh, if they publish a preprint, then someone else might come and, you know, take their ideas and, and publish it in the traditional publishing system uh, before them, you know, and this will def definitely uh, affect uh, their recognition and their career prospects. And and this is somewhat a, a, a valid concern. Uh, you know, we cannot say that this is not a valid concern. Because um, you know, African African scholars have been scooped a lot, but to help alleviate this concern is the fact that you know when you publish a preprint, actually a preprint is a full version of your work. You know, it's not as some believe that they are just like sort of a preliminary uh, version of your work, but they are actually. A preprint is this, the same manuscript that you would submit to a, uh, a journal. So a preprint will have all of the full research, you know, and actually when you post your research as a preprint, you're actually putting a stamp on time that you were the first one to sort of look at this problem or discover this gap, you know, or, or address uh, this issue that was uh, suggested by your work and, and by your preprint. So if you think about it, you know, uh, uh, actually preprints somehow help you from being scooped because we have seen many cases that, for example, a researcher have submitted their work uh, for a, a, a publisher, a traditional publisher. And during the peer review process, which could take up to years, some of the reviewers or some of the people working in the journal, you know, see the ideas and quickly go and do them in their lab and then publish this work as their own. And at this point, you as a researcher, you don't have any proof that this was your idea and this this work, this work was done by you before anyone else. Uh, so it really helps of, uh, if, if African scholars started thinking about preprints uh, like that as actually being 
uh, a protector for their work and a stamp in time that they were the ones who addressed this uh, issue uh, uh, the first. <clears throat> One of the other issues is that, uh, you know, African scholars are not working uh, in isolation. They are working with local publishers. They are working with local institutions, with local funding bodies. And if these, all of these bodies don't recognize preprints, then this makes sense that African scholars will not, uh, you know, adopt reprints. So this is one of the major issues: is that the local publishers, uh, academic and funding institution, are still not uh, recognizing preprints, and. Actually, th this is not an issue that is unique to Africa. Uh, institutional recognition of, of preprints is still something that, uh, uh, you know, uh, open science advocates are trying to work on uh, all around the world. Uh, it's, it's sort of a global issues, issue. But of course, it is to a greater extent when it comes to the African ecosystem, because again, there is lack of awareness uh, about preprints and their potential benefits. And one other uh, problem is that, as we said previously, that uh, the culture and institution, uh, the institution and bias is towards traditional peer-reviewed journals, you know? They are seen as more pre prestigious and they are seen as more reliable. So this is the culture that has been going on for years, not just in Africa, but all over the world, but I think us as Africans, we've been more traumatized by the biases that that we've seen uh, in the research ecosystem. That you know, uh, like our research being automatically judged as not credible and not good enough just because we are Africans and just because uh, the research was done in an in African institutions that don't necessarily have the uh, same infrastructure that other institution might have in the in the global north. So it makes sense that this culture is, is more embedded in our African ecosystem because, as I said, we've been traumatized uh, a lot by the bias and lack of trust in our work. And that's why, you know, the traditional uh, publishing and the peer-reviewed journals have become sort of, you know, like the stamp of uh, authenticity, the stamp of trustworthiness, and, and the stamp that this research is, you know, prestigious and, and reliable. So until we, we we are able to find a way to, to slowly start to move away uh, from this thinking, then uh, we will definitely see that preprints are not going to get adopted uh, more in Africa. Uh, and, and, and this other concern is, is linked to the, uh, you know, the preference for the traditional peer-reviewed journals is that, you know, preprints are not a less credible and a floor quality because they are not peer-reviewed uh, compared to peer-reviewed journal because they are not, like when a preprint is posted, is not posted after peer review. Even though that actually peer review for preprints happen and it happens, it's just happened that, you know, the time of peer review has changed from before publishing to after publishing. That, that's all the change that happened. And many studies have been done that showed that, you know, uh, and, and this is actually done, done by Johnny and his colleagues, and they found that, uh, you know, an article, uh, they compared uh, articles that have been published as preprints and then published in, in the traditional publishing system as, as, uh, as peer-reviewed articles, and they found that would, there will there was almost no change between these two versions. Maybe like a few changes, some figures or something, some really minor change. But most uh, like most of the times there is no change. So this proves that you know uh, preprints are not of less quality, uh, are definitely not of less uh, quality. But unfortunately, because the African ecosystem is really uh, invested in the traditional publishing and peer-reviewed journals uh, and see them more prestigious, they will definitely have concerns about uh, preprints being less credible of and of lower quality. One other issue is that most preprint servers are in English, uh, and this could be a barrier for non-English speaking researchers. And we know that in Africa, we have uh, you know, many countries 
that do speak English, but there are also many other countries that don't, you know, that English is not part of their uh, national languages that they speak. So this poses a great barrier, uh, you know, uh, may ha them having to only post in English. Uh, this this could be a barrier for some researchers that sort of prevent them from engaging with uh, with uh, with preprints and preprint server. So these are some of the uh, some of the uh, probable reasons that uh, make preprint adoption. Um, you know, uh, less uh, within the African uh, ecosystem. Uh, I'm not sure if there are any questions. I'm, I'm trying to look at the chat. Not yet. Uh, okay, great. Uh, does anyone have a question or maybe a comment before we go? Uh, does any of you sort of share some of these concerns? Uh, that we've just talked about, or how do you feel about them? Would anyone want to comment? Okay, uh, let's continue, and then we'll have a discussion at the end. Okay. Uh, so again, these were the uh, uh, some of the reasons that. Uh, justify or explain why there is a low adoption rate in Africa. So uh, one of the things that that the efforts that are currently happening uh, that are trying to sort of fill those gaps and uh, alleviate those worries uh, within the African ecosystem is that, first of all, there are many awareness and training programs, uh, mainly led by ASAP Bio and led by other communities like the Africa Reproducibility Network. And these uh, awareness and training programs are trying to, you know, uh, teach African scholars about the uh, importance of preprints, about the advantages of preprints, and hopefully, you know, addressing that gap of the lack of knowledge that we see uh, across Africa. Uh, one other initiatives was the establishing, establishing of the Africa archives. And this is a local, pre local preprint repository uh, that is, you know, uh, contains preprints that are posted by Africans or uh, preprints that are discussing Africa or, or, or done within the African context. And uh, the, the nice thing about Africa Archive is that they actually encourage uh, researchers to publish in their uh, local language, you know, in the language that they prefer. They don't uh, mandate that the uh, that the uh, preprint is published in English, and we really hope that you know by having more preprint servers like Africa Archive, we would uh, again break the barrier of language and encourage um, encourage African researchers to post uh, more and more preprints. One of the other uh, major issues uh, or concerns that scho African scholars have towards preprint is the peer review, you know, uh, uh, saying that uh, preprints are not peer reviewed. So it makes sense that, you know, uh, uh, efforts that are done at a preprint review, you know, are trying to work more and more uh, within the African ecosystem. For example, we have peer review, and, you know, this is a wonderful platform and a wonderful initiative that, uh, first of all, teaches researchers how to do peer review and teaches them how to sort of avoid the biases that we, you know, might consciously or unconsciously have and encourage, uh, you know, people from all walks of life, whether you are an early career researcher, where you, whether you are a professor, wherever you are in the, you know, uh, in, in, in the research spectrum, you have a chance to be a reviewer and, and pre-review empower you and give you all the uh, the tools and skills that you need to become a good uh, peer reviewer. And then you can uh, peer review, a review a, uh, um, a preprint and this is usually done live, like a group of people will come together in a call, a Zoom call like this, and they will uh, review a preprint. And then what's nice about pre-review is that they, the final review is posted 
in their platform and it will have a DOI. So, you know, this gives the reviewers a chance to showcase that, you know, in their CV, just as you are, uh, you know, posting the publications that you have, you could also post the peer reviews that you've done, you know, since this, uh, this review have a DOI, so it have like a permanent place uh, in the in the internet, then you can cite it in your CV and this will showcase uh, your skills as a peer reviewer. And, and this, this is definitely a very important skill that could uh, sort of set uh, applicants, for example, for a program apart, showing that you have that critical skills to, to do peer review is very important. So as I said, peer review is a very wonderful initiative that I would encourage all of you to go and, and, and get in touch with. And they do provide a lot of training uh, modules and programs uh, that all of us Africans could, could, uh, could benefit from. One other uh, initiative uh, that, that is trying to encourage more and more preprint peer review is ASA Bio Crowd preprint review. And what ASA Bio has done is that they have uh, sort of created um, crowds, for example, microbiology crowd, immunology crowd, you know, so they are trying to bring a group of people uh, virtually. And uh, then this uh, group of people, these crowds, they have like a crowd leader. And then what, what these crowds does is that every uh, few weeks or every month, they, uh, the crowd leader could pick a preprint and then this uh, crowd could review this preprint asynchronously. They use Google Documents, which is very simple, you know. So uh, uh, they they put this preprint out in the Google in a Google document, and they allow the crowd members to comment and review these preprints. And then uh, these comments are sort of gathered in into one review, and this review again is is posted in pre review. Uh, because as you said previously, one of the nice thing about pre-review is that it allows you to, uh, it, it allows the, the review to have a DOI. And one other thing that I forgot to mention is that it directly linked this review to your ORCID ID. You know, so one of the requirements uh, for you to post uh, a review on pre-review pre is, is to have an ORCID ID. Because then automatically this uh, review will be linked to your ORCID ID and then Anyone who have access to your ORCID ID will be able to see uh, the efforts that you're doing in, in, in peer review. So uh, all in all, these, these efforts are, you know, uh, maybe modest, but, you know, it's a start. And, uh, you know, as more and more uh, African scholars become aware of preprints and their importance, we will definitely try, start to see a snowball effect uh, that, uh, you know, more and more uh, people will start adopting preprints and, and, and hopefully preprint will become a, a norm in the African ecosystem. So in conclusion, uh, preprints offer African researchers an accessible and efficient way to disseminate findings. And, and we've proved that uh, by many means, you know. And it will help them overcome the traditional barriers like high uh, article processing charges, long publication times, and predatory journals. Uh, and while preprint adoption in Africa still remains low than the global averages, yet awareness is increasing. And, and, and you guys attending this uh, webinar is, is a great example of that. You know, people are starting to become more and more aware of preprints. And local platforms such as Africa Archive are uh, help, helping or hoping to foster more engagement uh, with preprints. In addition to the uh, awareness effort that is done by ASAP Bio and the Africa Reproducibility Network and, and many other uh, open science initiatives within Africa, and also in addition to the uh, encouragement of preprint uh, peer review. And so you might ask what, what could be the next actionable steps that we could do to uh, make uh, the adoption or enhance the adoption of preprints in Africa. And first of all, I think we should encourage institutional and cultural shift, shift towards preprints. We should start to, you know, try to see the, 
the many disadvantages that the traditional publishing system currently have and the great uh, ways that it is unfair and inequitable, especially for us as African researchers. And we have to sort of keep an open mind for uh, preprints and open mind of, for uh, how they would, you know, help us mitigate these uh, these issues that are in the uh, pub uh, the traditional publishing system. And of course, when we have institutional recognition, this will help the 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 adoption of preprints greatly, you know, it, because if you are a researcher working within a certain uh, within a certain institution and your institution accepts preprint and acknowledge them as a valid uh, way of of uh, of showcasing uh, you know, your productivity as a researcher and as an academic, then definitely you will go to the preprint. You will definitely not go to uh, like uh, an, a journal that you have to pay like a hard article processing charge for, but you will definitely uh, go to a preprint. Uh, the second thing is that we need to address the barriers such as the awareness, recognition, and technical infrastructure. Uh, these are all like barriers that as we discussed, uh, prevents uh, the African ecosystem from, uh, you know, adopting preprints faster. So addressing these uh, these issues will help in enhancing the adoption of preprints. And finally, advocacy, uh, advocacy and training about the benefits uh, of preprints and the uh, ease by which preprints could be posted and the many advantages that it brings would definitely be, uh, you know, a key step in 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 enhancing their adoption uh, within Africa. And finally, uh, together we can enhance research visibility and accelerate scientific progress across Africa if we try to adopt uh, more open uh, research practices uh, that will definitely uh, lead to a more equitable uh, and inclusive uh, global research ecosystem. And by that, I come to the end of my session or my presentation. Uh, thank you all for listening. And I think uh, we could open up the floor for any questions or comments uh, that you guys might have. I hope I wasn't talking too fast. No, that was really good. It's nice seeing a lot of familiar faces uh, within the audience. It's really nice. Uh, but does anyone have a comment or, uh, you know, a question, anything that you would like to share with us? Okay. If not, then I think we could uh, talk a bit about the next steps. Uh, so uh, thank you for attending this series of webinars and we really hope that uh, they've been useful to you and they've opened your eyes to the uh, advantages of preprints and hopefully you could act as ambassadors to your communities and start uh, engaging with them about preprints and their importance. And as we said, and as we promised, uh, uh, we will be distributing uh, certificates and badges uh, for those who uh, would like to have them uh, for attending this uh, this series of webinars. But you have to first uh, complete uh, a post-training survey. Uh, I think I could share the link here. Uh, try to share the link here. I'll share it in the chat. And I think uh, Johnny will be able to send it uh, via email to everyone or uh, what do you think? Yeah, so there will be an email afterwards to outline who is eligible for a certificate because if you have not only attended like one of these sessions, that's not eligible. If you don't fill out the post survey, then you're also not eligible. So I'll make it, all, I'll make it very clear in the email. And it'll include the link to the survey. And I'll also explain sort of what we're going to do after that. Um, so that the, these will all be up on YouTube probably mid-November. Uh, I just need to sort of tidy them up a little bit for YouTube. And the other thing is 
there will probably be a blog post um, just kind of summarizing the pre-survey and the poll survey and, and looking at whether or not this kind of thing is useful to do again in the future and all that kind of stuff. So you, you will actually see the outcome of, of the effort you put into a, a five-minute survey. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, so if there are no more questions or comments, I think we could close the curtains on this session. And thank you all for joining and, and listening.